Hey everybody, this is Yosarian from BoyMeetsPhone.com. What I have here today is the HTC Evo Design 4G for Boost Mobile. Taking a quick hardware tour, up front we have a 4 inch QHD Super LCD display. So that's a resolution of 960 by 540. Right above the display we have the earpiece grill. Behind the grill, right around here, is the status light. On the left side of the grill we have the ambient light sensor. Right above the edge of the glass, so right around this area right here, is the proximity sensor. And right here is the phone's 1.3 megapixel front facing camera. Below the display we have the capacitive buttons for home, menu, back and search. On the left side we have a volume rocker which is nicely defined, offers good feedback. Up top we have the 3.5mm headphone jack, a secondary mic, and the power and screen lock button, which again is nicely defined. It's not too far out there, but easy to find and offers good feedback. There is nothing on the right spine. Taking a look at the back, we have the phone's 5 megapixel, 5 megapixel backside illuminated camera and a single LED flash. And here we have the speaker grill. On the bottom here, you see the main microphone. And to get to the battery, this is a unibody design, as you might have noticed. So to get to the battery, you actually have to take this back piece off. And here we have the micro SD card slot. It ships with a 2 gig micro SD card. And here is the battery. To actually get to the battery, you have to flip this part open. And you'll see right there, there's actually a SIM card slot right there. Before to focus, yep. there's a SIM card slot right there because the phone is a world phone. However, Boost Mobile is not going to be supporting the world phone, the world phone feature on this device. The Evo Design 4G on Boost Mobile ships with Android 4.0.6 Ice Cream Sandwich with HDC Sense 3.6. You can see right there. I'm going to take a look at the home screen. You start off with seven home panels. You can delete home panels by dragging, pinching in, get an overview of everything, and dragging it up to there where it says delete. You can rearrange them. You can also add home panels by clicking add. You can have up to seven. You can delete all but one if you want to. You see that green border around that one? That indicates that it is the home panel. So Anytime you want to get to that panel, you just hit the home button. Well, anytime you want to get to it while you're on the home screen, you just hit the home button, and it'll jump right to that. Taking a look at the dock on the bottom, you'll see that we have four icons. These four icons actually match with the quick launch icons from the lock screen. You go to the lock screen, you see these four icons. You can quickly jump into these apps by dragging them into the ring. If you wanted to just unlock the device, you just drag It'll ring up and let go. No unlock the device. You can rearrange and change the dock to show whatever apps you want. So say I'm going to jump to the app drawer and I want Facebook to be there. Drag Facebook there and see if I, I want internet to be there too. And now if I go to the lock screen, Facebook and Internet are there. To add widgets, you just press and hold on the screen. You go into the personalization menu. You can also, from the home screen, hit menu and personalize. In personalization menu, you can add widgets, apps, and shortcuts. You can change the display by changing the wallpaper. Change the scene modes, which changes how the what widgets and Excel can change the bottom bar what's showing up depending on how you set it. So you want like a work one, you can go to work and rearrange that to fit your needs for work and have what apps you need to quickly get to available to you. Change the wallpaper. You have you choose from pictures you've taken, the HTC wallpaper or your live wallpapers. You can also change the lock screen style. You can either just have the wallpaper showing photo album, 
your friend stream, which is your social network aggregator, it will show all your updates from all your friends flying across your screen. Weather, which will update you on the weather every time you unlock your phone. And the clock, so you can have a clock show on your lock screen. And also turn those shortcuts off, so now that I turn them off, you see, they're gone. You can also change the sound settings from here. You can either choose from a sound set, which you can download more from the HTC Hub. Right now I just have the HTC default one up. You can also change them yourself, so if you want to change the ringtone, you have a list of ringtones, you can change the notification and your alarm tones. Taking a look at the notification drop-down, you'll see a list of your recently opened apps in your notifications down here. If you have a notification, you can slide it away to get rid of it, or you can press it to open it. And here you have these tabs switch to your quick settings. It allows you to quickly change settings like your mobile network, turn on the mobile hotspot. Boost Mobile is supporting the mobile hotspot feature. It will cost an extra $15 a month, but you will get to be able to use this as a hotspot for up to five devices, I believe. You can turn the 4G data on and off, turn the Bluetooth on and off, and switch between airplane mode and free up memory by controlling the task manager. See what tasks you have open. You can either kill them all or can kill them individually to free up some RAM on this device. Taking a look at the app drawer, you'll see that everything is divided into three sections on the bottom here. You have all your apps. Oh, if you press and hold, you can rearrange these. You have all your apps, frequently used apps, and your downloads. For those who worry about bloatware, you'll be happy to know that Boost Mobile did not add much to this device. You have Boost Zone, which helps you manage your account, and also lets you know if there's any promotions going on. You have Hooked, which is a basically just a link to RG Chat. And you also have voicemail, which is your visual voicemail service. This phone does support visual voicemail for an extra $5 a month. But you do have a 30-day free trial, so I would highly suggest checking it out. And you also have Telenav GPS, which if you're into using Telenav and you don't want to use um, the Google navigation, you have that option. As far as what HTC is added with Sense, you have their own calculator slightly different from the regular Android calculator. And if you switch to this, switch to a scientific mode. You have dock mode, which is really nice looking. Exit that, that. Go back to the app drawer. You have Facebook chat, which is offer, also offers a widget you can sign in using your friend stream and it'll you'll be able to chat from your friends with your friends and see who's online. It's just nice to have on board. You have friend streams, which is your social network aggregator and can link up your LinkedIn, Facebook, your Flickr account, and also Twitter. You have Media Share, which is the your DLNA app. So you can wirelessly and pictures and different kind of media to other DLNA enabled devices. See, you have the music player, the HTC music player. Right now I don't have any music on this device, unfortunately. And you also have tasks, which is a list of things that you need to do. You can create new tasks and to, you know, check it off when you do it so you can keep things organized. And you also have HTC Watch, which allows you to purchase and rent movies and purchase TV shows. It took a little while for it to load up, but you can see here is HTC Watch. It has a decent selection of movies. Um, not too much on the TV show front. You have about 30 different shows to choose from. Prices range from, sometimes they have movie rentals on sale, you can see right there, it actually has one on sale for 66 cents. So prices range from as low as 25 cents every once in a while, to as high as $20 to buy a movie.
As far as text input goes, you only have the HTC keyboard out of the box. However, you do have three different options within the keyboard. You can either type on this regularly. You can trace from letter to letter to form words. Or you can use the Google voice to text input method. With Ice Cream Sandwich, it translates your voice to text as quickly as possible. Period. If it makes a mistake or believes that it made a mistake, it will underline the word or phrase allowing you to tap on it to see different options. Period. So that is a look at the text input on the HTC Evo Design 4G for Boost Mobile. The Boost Mobile Evo Design 4G runs on Sprint's EVDO network for 3G service and Sprint's WiMAX network for 4G service. As far as cellular reception goes, I did not have an issue keeping a signal. It rarely fell below 3 bars. As far as data speeds go, on their EVDO network, I managed to average 0.44 megabits per second on the upload and 0.50 megabits per second on the download. Your data speeds might vary depending on your 3G coverage in your area. As far as WiMAX, I did get a chance to test out this phone in a WiMAX service area. For their download speeds, I averaged 4 megabits per second. And on the upload, I averaged 1.18 megabits per second. Again, your data speeds may vary depending on how your coverage is in your area. As far as sound quality goes, sound through the earpiece was audible at its loudest volume. I did hear some slight crackling and every once in a while callers would complain about me sounding like I was talking from a distance but I think that was more due to how I was holding device relative to where the microphone is than how the microphone handles picking up sounds. As far as sound through the speaker, I found that it lacks bass when listening to music however it is decently loud and more than audible. The HTC Evo Design 4G is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon MSM8655 chipset. So that consists of a Adreno 205 GPU and a single core 1.2 GHz Scorpion CPU. There is 768 megabytes of RAM on this device and as far as storage goes, you have 1.11 gigabytes of internal storage and you, it does ship with a 2 gig SD card. Don't let the fact that this is a single core processor fool you. This is a seriously snappy device. You won't be thinking about how many cores is on this device when you are using this on a daily basis. Apps open rather quickly and I also f actually found that it was slightly faster than my dual core sensation. As far as battery luck goes, this phone has a 1520 milliamp hour battery, which might seem a little strong, a little small, especially given that it's a WiMAX phone. However, on WiMAX, I was able to get six hours, well, seven hours battery life before it reached the 38% battery mark. That was with two email accounts syncing, Facebook syncing, me watching a few videos on YouTube, me doing some navigation. Um, <clears throat> I also, you know, checked online, see what was going on, I sent some text messages, took some pictures, took some video. So that was with some, a decent amount of usage. I was able to get seven hours before reaching the 38% battery mark while on a WiMAX network. As far as on a 3G network, on average I got 15 hours of battery life out of this device on 3G. During my lightest usage today, I was able to get about two hours of battery life, not two hours, sorry, two days. Two hours would have been nothing. Two days worth of battery life out of this device during a very light usage day. As far as 
performance issues go, I didn't have much going perform as performance go. There are a few bugs on this device. Every once in a while you will not be able to make folders, defend depending on what scene you're using. found that with the Boost Mobile scene I was unable to make folders. It would hover above it and make the folder icon and then break apart. It wouldn't actually create the folder. And I also found that in friend stream you cannot click on links, so you cannot view the pic click to view the pictures or click on links to different sites. Um, hopefully this is fixed in a update soon. I did receive two updates while testing this device, so they are going to be keeping up with you know the maintenance on this device, so it's nice to see. Taking a look at the web browser, you'll see that we have a HTC version of the Ice Cream Sandwich WebKit browser. It does support pinch to zoom. With the HTC browsers on Ice Cream Sandwich, every once in a while, especially when you're reflowing text, you see that goes gray for a little bit, and then it comes back. I'm not too sure why it does that, but that does happen. It doesn't last for too long. It only happens when you're you know, switching between reflowing text. As far as the settings go, if you hit menu, you have the option of requesting a desktop view, finding words on the page, uh, going through the windows, go through the windows thing a little bit later, checking out your bookmarks, adding a page either to your bookmark or your RSS feed, sharing a page, checking out the things you've downloaded through the web browser, viewing your browser history, and in more settings you have your privacy and security settings, your accessibility settings, some advanced settings, some general stuff, um, bandwidth manager, um, controls if it'll load images and preload with search results is a way to limit the amount of data the web browser is using. To check out your bookmarks and your history and your most viewed web pages, you can also press the and hold the back button and it will show up. To unlike on Previous versions of the HTC web browser on Android, you cannot pinch in all the way. In order to get the window view, you will have to hit Menu and Windows. But from the Windows, you can also you can add more windows and also open up some incon an incognito window, so it won't track your motion your movements online. This browser does support Adobe Flash, so I'm going to wait for this to load up. I'm going to head over to the Pomegranate Phone website. that load up. This is loading over Wi-Fi, so hopefully it shouldn't take too long. Now that's loaded up, I'm going to press enter. As you can see, it's not the smoothest when it comes to playing Flash, however it does support Flash. The Evo Design 4G uses the HTC camera interface. On the right side you have modes, you can switch between taking still and video. Right now I have a set of video, I'm going to go back to still. You can also change from the rear facing 5 megapixel camera to the front facing 1.3 megapixel camera. You have scene modes. So you can change, choose between auto, portrait, landscape, action burst, which will take a succession of five shots, panoramic, which will stitch together three shots, backlight HDR, which is high dynamic range, so it takes pictures at three different exposure levels and combines them together, whiteboard, which has kind of like a whiteboard like effect, close ups, so it helps with taking macro shots, and low light. You have the on-screen shutter button right here. There is no physical shutter button on this device. Below the shutter button, you have the controls for the flash. You need to turn it on, off, or on auto. So it will only come on depending on the situation. And in your settings, you can change the timer, adjust things like saturation, well, adjust things like saturation, exposure, and contrast. 
change the white balance, change the ISO, change the resolution of the image, all the way down to small, which is 6, 640 by 480. Change the review duration. By default, it's on widescreen, so that means it's going to be a 16 by 9 axe by ratio. And turn the geolocation on and off. Auto enhance, which will automatically enhance the photos after you take them. Auto focus. You have face detection, and you can turn the grid on and off. It does support tap to focus, and it does focus rather quickly. On the left side, we have the preview of the last image taken. We also have the effects. We have a good amount of different effects. You can add depth of field, distort your image, make it look kind of vintage. Put in the grayscale, use sepia tone, make it negative. We also have dots, which is kind of fun. All different kind of effects you can add. And you can use the effects when you're using the front facing camera too. As far as image quality goes, I found that this focus was a little bit soft and images, especially close-ups, were a little bit noisy. Um, playing around with the ISO and turning Auto Enhance off will help improve that. Overall, I found that the colors were nice. As far as video goes, this camera can shoot at high def at 720p. You also can have the option of taking slow motion videos. If you choose slow motion videos, you are limited to QHD at the highest resolution. It does support tap to focus when taking video, and you can zoom in when taking video, though I did found it, find that it was a little bit jinky. You didn't always want to zoom in while I'm pressing the button to zoom. It does do it eventually, though. And also control, use the backlight. Oh, sorry. Use the flash as a torch for video recording. As far as videos go, I found that color reproduction is nice. It was a little bit soft on the focus, but overall captured a good amount of detail. And the sound recording was good. You do have the option of switching between regular audio and stereo audio, or turning audio recording off altogether. So you turn stereo off. It won't use the secondary mic to record sound. It'll only use the main mic. So overall this camera is pretty good. This might sound a little ironic to say, but I don't think 4G is the reason to go out and buy the HTC EVO Design 4G. It's a nice feature to have, but it's just not compelling enough to make it a main selling point. However, this phone does offer snappy performance. Opening up apps takes no time, so it's a really fast device. It ships with ice cream sandwich, which is something you don't see too much of these days. It has HTC Sense 3.6, which is a good interface for those looking for something a little bit different than vanilla Android. It has a very fast rear-facing camera, which takes good pics. I think those are some more the more compelling reasons to go out and check out the HTC Evo Design 4G for Boost Mobile. For the full in-depth review of this device, head over to the site. BoyMeetsPhone.com. This is Yasan from BoyMeetsPhone. Thanks for watching.